Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics. In this DCS AH64D video, we'll go over how to configure the fire control radar or FCR target prioritization and how to engage targets with our onboard weapon systems using FCR target data. If you have not already, I strongly suggest that you review the earlier videos on creating zones and understanding FCR pages and controls. I've included cards and links in the video notes. Let's get started. Let's first talk about FCR target prioritization. And the first way we can do that is through the FCR priority schemes. And we touched on this a little bit in the previous video on the FCR pages. So let's go to the FCR page, then utility. And on the right side, we have the priority scheme, which defaults to A. Now with A, a scheme selected, it will prioritize stationary and moving targets. So if you were, say, going against a established defensive line with air cover, you may want to go with A. And if you come back out, let's do a single scan burst. We can see that both the NTS and alternate NTS are both stationary uh, air defense units, or ADUs. Let's come back. Now let's go to uh, Scheme B. And with Scheme B, it will prioritize just stationary targets. Single scan burst. And in this case, it pretty much remained the same. And for uh, this type of scheme, you may want to use it against, you know, again, stationary targets, but with no air cover. And finally, let's go to Scheme C. And with Scheme C, it will prioritize moving targets. Single scan burst. And we can see now that it prioritizes two moving targets. And we can see those are also uh, the helicopter units indicated by the bow tie symbols. And of course, with this type of scheme, you'll want to use it with uh, mobile units, say like immediate engagements or uh, units in road march. The other way we can set prioritization is using priority fire zones and no fire zones. And we talked about this in my earlier video on fire zones, and I'll create a card as well as a link in the video notes to review it. So first, let's go ahead and zoom into the TSD. We're going to set this up. And we're going to go to the uh, Battle Area Management page or the BAM page. We can see that the type is already set to priority fire zone or PF. And you can also see uh, that the targets, we have the uh, next to shoot and the alternate next to shoot, both uh, stationary air defense units. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a pr priority fire zone just on the right side to exclude the current NTS target. Next, we're going to go ahead and activate it. Currently, it's set to none on L3. So click on the push tile. I'm going to go to PF1, which is the uh, PSE I just created. We can see the PF is now uh, animated, which you can also see here on the TDU. And now what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and do a single scan burst. And we can see the NTS was then moved to the priority fire zone. And also the priorities will adhere to the scheme we set up in the utility page of the SCR. Uh, next, let's go ahead and set up a no fire zone to exclude any targets from the shoot list. So coming back to the BAM page, let's go to type to NF1. And anything within the zone, even if it overlaps the PFZ, will be excluded from that shoot list. Let's go to these guys here. Set. Going to accept it. And now activate it, indicated by the animated marquee. Coming back out. Single burst scan. And you can see all those targets now have been removed from the shoot list within the no fire zone. Okay, now the fun part, engagement. 
And like we talked about before, the large diamond indicates the next to shoot target symbol, which is the highest priority within the shoot list. And the large triangle is the alternate next to shoot or the ants symbol. The target of the NTS's range is indicated on the hat, in this case, 4.6 kilometers. And this information is automatically handed off to the radar Hellfire, but it'll also provide targeting solution for both rocket and guns. Uh, once I send a radar Hellfire at the current NTS target, the NTS will automatically move to the next target in priority, which is the ants. And the current ants will then be moved down the chain within the priority list. So let's go ahead and take a look at this in action. So, rifle. And you can see the NTS got moved to what was the ants, and the ants got moved to essentially the third priority target within the shoot list. Let's do it one more time. And the same thing. And you can see the ants is actually now a helicopter almost at about eight kilometers out there. You also may notice those X's. I'm gonna talk about those in a later video, but those are your shot cues, which indicates uh, which targets you've sent a missile at but does not necessarily indicate that those targets are dead. Now, in addition to this uh, automatic uh, cycling of NTS and ANTS, we can also do it manually through the NTS indication both on the TDU and the MPD. So for example, if I wanted to do it on the TDU, let's go ahead and move my HOCAS cursor to the TDU, place it over NTS. Actually, first let me go ahead and do a single scan burst, update the targets. Once it's done, I'll get NTS back. Okay, so press, and you can see it automatically then switched the NTS to the next target in priority within the shoot list. And with each press, it continues to cycle through my shoot list. And we can also do this on the MPD page as well. Let's actually move the uh, cursor back to the MPD and zoom in. You'll also notice we can see we have the constraint box for Hellfire there as well, which can be pretty handy. Now, in addition to the two methods we just looked at, we can also uh, manually select a target as well. Again, let's do a single scan burst to update. So we've got a helicopter down here. So what I can also do is move my cursor over that target, press and release, and I've now made that my NTS target. So folks, I hope you enjoyed this video on prioritization and engagement, and I will see you next time. Thanks.